Hey, Faith family, my name is Ben. I'm one of the pastors here at Faith Baptist Church in Youngsville. I wanted to take a few minutes to introduce the book of the Bible that we are scheduled to begin studying this week in our Bible reading plan. Uh, before I do, though, I want to invite any of you that are not currently participating in the Bible reading plan to join us. We read two to three chapters a day of the Bible, five days a week, and at that pace, we'll read it in two years. You can get a copy of the Bible reading plan on our website. Uh, there you'll also find videos like this one that give an introduction to other books of the Bible as well as one-page handouts that summarize uh, each book of the Bible that we're reading. Uh, I hope you'll join us and that we can grow in our study of God's Word together. This week we begin the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel is admittedly one of the more difficult books of the Bible to study. It's difficult because it's written uh, in several different styles and genres. It's, it's narrative mixed with poetry, mixed with apocalyptic writing, mixed with prophecy. It also contains a lot of symbolism where visions and actions of people represent something else. And so if you, if you aren't careful, you can get very confused in trying to figure out what everything means. But let me encourage you to do the hard work of reading this book and studying it because it is rich with lessons that we need to be reminded of. That our God is holy, that He acts on behalf of His name, and that we are in great need of a Savior. And so uh, let me encourage you to do that. This book contains some of the richest pictures of how we can have life in Christ in the Old Testament. Uh, the book of Ezekiel was written by the prophet with the same name. It is a collection of visions and oracles that was given by God to Ezekiel between the years of 593 B.C. and 571 B.C. Ezekiel was a priest from Jerusalem, but while he was from Jerusalem, he did not minister there. His, his prophecies happened while he is in Babylon. You see, Ezekiel was part of the first wave of captives that was taken in exile by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon in 597 BC. Five years after he is taken captive, God appears to Ezekiel while he's in Babylon and says, I have a message for you to share with your fellow exiles and with those that will still be in Judah. And this message is a message of judgment. It's a message of judgment on Judah for their uh, unrepentant, blatant idolatry. And so throughout the book we see prophecies of Judah's destruction and more importantly perhaps the, the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem, the temple that was designed to worship God. All of these things are prophesied for the first probably two-thirds of the book and then in Ex or Ezekiel chapter 33 we see the destruction of Jerusalem and the destruction of the temple. The tone of the book then drastically changes and all of a sudden from a message of judgment it becomes a message of hope. And the book ends as Ezekiel prophesies that there will be a day that God will restore His people to relationship with Him and He will do that by giving them a new heart so they can know Him and follow after Him. And then the conclusion of the book ends with this, this vision of a grand new temple almost an otherworldly temple with a river flowing out of it and this river gives life to everything it touches and it is a picture of the hope that is to come to God's people. There are five key themes in the book of Ezekiel that you'll see over and over again in the coming weeks as we study this book and I want to I highlight some of them for you right now. First of all, God's glory. God is holy and worthy of praise. He will not share His glory with others. Much of Ezekiel focuses on how God is acting on behalf of His name and His glory, vindicating the holiness of His great name. Uh, let me read to you a famous example of that out of Exodus chapter 36 in verse 22 and 23. It says, Therefore I say to the house of Israel, This is what the Lord God says, It is not for your sake that I will act, house of Israel, but for my holy name, which you profaned among the nations where you went. I will honor the holiness of my great name, which, you, which has been profaned among the nations, the name you have profaned among them. The nations will know that I am the Lord. This is the declaration of the Lord God when I demonstrate my holiness through you in their sight. God acts on behalf of His great name so that the nations may know Him. This theme occurs over and over again throughout the book of Ezekiel. Secondly, you will see the foolishness of idolatry. 
Um, Ezekiel often uses graphic language to depict how repugnant and repulsive idolatry is to God. For example, he compares idolatry to adultery, uh, accusing God's people of cheating on him with pagan idols. And, And worship of anything except God is empty and will ultimately result in judgment from him. Third, we see that God is sovereign over all nations. Not only does he judge Israel and Judah, but he judges the seven nations around them. He then, there's a section of the book that uh, talks about Gog of Magog, which is a picture of all the nations of the earth rebelling against God, and God judges them as well. But he's not only judging the nations, he's also working to bring the nations to know him, and he is... Uh, using pagan leaders to accomplish his purposes. There is no king more powerful than God. God is sovereign over all of the nations. The fourth theme we see that runs throughout the book of Ezekiel is that humanity needs a new heart. Uh, The Israelites fail to repent of their idolatry because of the hardness of their hearts. God promises to give his people a new heart uh, and thus enabling them to know him and follow his commands. Again, we see this very clearly in chapter 36, starting in verse 24. He says, For I will take you from the nations and gather you from the countries and will bring you into your own land. I will also sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean and I will cleanse you from all your impurities and your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will place my spirit within you and cause you to follow my statutes and carefully obey my ordinances. This this is God telling his people that they are unable to follow him, but he will recreate their heart and make them new so that they can know him and follow him. The next chapter, chapter 37, depicts this in a very just shocking way. Ezekiel sees a valley of bones, that uh, of skeletons, and they have been dead for a long time. And then all of a sudden he sees a wind uh, that represents the Spirit of God blow over these bones, and the bones come to life and they begin to walk and flesh is formed on them. Uh, it is a picture of God recreating humanity, of making them new, and it, is, it points us to the hope that we have in Christ. That, that apart from Christ, we are dead in our sins, but when the Spirit of God moves in our lives and we believe in Jesus, we are made alive and we are made new. The final theme in the book of Ezekiel is the promise of new creation. The book of Ezekiel ends with a vision of a magnificent temple, a temple that is bigger than any building that was in Jerusalem, and it, and it, is, it seems almost otherworldly. And out of this temple flows a river, and this river flows down and flows all the way to the area of the Dead Sea, and it brings life and peace and harmony. This imagery is very similar to the imagery that's found in the book of Revelation and depicts the hope of a restored creation without the effects of sin. Ezekiel promises us that God is not only giving his people a new heart, but he's giving them a new place to live in in his presence. It is the hope that we have as Christians. Ezekiel is a challenging book, but I pray as you study it, you will be reminded anew of God's glory, our need for salvation, and the promise of an eternity with him in paradise. And may we bring glory to God as we study it together. God bless you.